Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> All right, people are folding in. Brother Matthew Whitney, how were you, my friend? God bless you, Sister Dora. Mr. Crystal and Brother Ben, Brother Gene, everyone's folding in. God bless you this evening. Praise the Lord. Welcome out. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Sister Thais, Brother Ed, how are you? See Brother John on. Mr. Renee, Brother Ben, praise God. Welcome out to the service this evening. Good evening to you, Sister Ronke. Praise the Lord. Hello, Sister Alexis and Sister Shelley. Amen. Praise the Lord. I trust everybody had a nice afternoon. We certainly did. Give it a couple minutes just for people to come in. That would be great. I'm excited to minister to you today from my home. Praise God. Looking forward to all that God's going to do for us tonight. And I will guarantee this. He's going to do something for us because that's the way God is. So I'm really looking forward to it tonight. Yes, happy Sunday night. <laughs> Amen. Hello, Sister Lynn and Sister Carol. Praise God. Sister Lori. Praise God. Amen. We'll get started in one moment. As everyone folds in. Praise the Lord. We got Brother Jim and Sister Judy Mullen listening in tonight. Praise the Lord. God bless you folks. Reverend Kalinsky, praise the Lord. Brother Willie, how are you, my friend? Nice to see everybody coming in. Well, we're going to have a good time tonight in the Lord. We, we have a special treat tonight. My wife is going to sing a song that's been on her heart. So she's going to get out here momentarily uh, once we open this service up. So we're excited about that, excited about the word. Uh, tonight I'm going to preach to you on No Matter What. That's the title of my message. So I'm looking forward to that. Praise the Lord. Hey, Reverend Hamlin, how are you? Reverend Lawton back. Sister Cheryl, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So how are all you parents doing? <laughs> I think there's some light at the end of this tunnel. Hallelujah. You know, Sister Betty Camary said a long time ago, she said, you know, having one child is one thing, having two is another. But when you have three, she goes, everything changes. And you know what? Those words of wisdom were absolutely true. Because once you go beyond two, when you have a, you know, a father and mother at home, it's one-on-one, -on -one, but then you're outnumbered by the kids. Somebody say amen. That's a whole different dynamic. But praise God, we're, uh, we've had, had a blast. It's been such an interesting time. We get to learn our children. They get to learn more about us. Uh, how your parent, all you parents doing? You doing okay? Now that we're in summertime, you don't have to figure out how to log in and get your schoolwork for your kids <laughs> online and all this fun stuff. My goodness. We had to all become teachers this year. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Amen. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. So um, for those that are online, uh, I just want to just make a reminder here, uh, as you know, uh, we're not gathering for the services quite yet. Uh, we're hoping that that's going to happen soon. So stay tuned to our posts and to a uh, pastor who will announce probably the time that we'll gather together uh, sometime in the future. That date is not determined, in case you were wondering. However, um, 
because we are still gathering here, you still have an opportunity to give. And there's so many things that are in need for the church, the mission programs and things that are going on, uh, even at home, around our community. So if you can continue to give, that would be very, very helpful. And uh, it's such a blessing to be able to give. The Bible even says it's more blessed to give than receive. Uh, so there are ways that you can give tonight. Uh, one is you can mail your offering in or your tithes to P.O. Box 4017, Manchester, Connecticut, 06045. That's the church address. So you can make that check out there and send that in the mail. You could go to the website as well, fgichurch.org, and you can click that donate button. And then we have the Easy Tithe app, which is essentially you just download the app on your phone. Uh, it's very straightforward. You look for the church's name, and then you're able to give through all the prompts that it provides to you. So very easy ways to give these days uh, to the house of the Lord, which is very important. And you'll never lose your reward. So praise the Lord. So we are going to get started today, and um, I'm going to have my wife come, and she wanted to share a little bit and just uh, sing this song for you. So I'm going to get out of the way and have her come at this time. Come on, Sister Liz. Hey, everybody. So far beyond before even COVID hit, um, the Lord had just kind of laid a scripture on my heart, and it's in Psalms, and it just talks about how only those with clean hands and a pure heart shall ascend the hill of the Lord. And, you know, far back when he did that, laid that on my heart, um, I just began to ask God, you know, just really search me and remove anything that doesn't glorify you. And, um, you know, just taking a stand when you need to take a stand and doing all the right things that, I mean, that'll always be a part of who I am at my core. Um, but Lord, just, you know, take anything, remove anything that doesn't glorify you. And then shortly after this old song just was, came to my mind and my heart and it's, my God can do anything. And so I'm just going to sing that tonight. David, Nelson, I really wish I could hear your piano right now, but sing along with me and, and just be encouraged tonight. My God can do anything. Anything, anything, my God, he can do anything. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. My God can do just what he said. My God, he can do it again. My God can do anything, anything, anything. My God, he can do anything. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. My God can do just what he said. My God, he can do anything. Hallelujah. Let's sing it one more time. My God can do anything, anything, anything. My God, he can do anything. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. My God can do just what he said. My God, he can do Amen. Hallelujah. He can do anything. Whatever your need is today, just say, God, I need you to fill in the blank exclamation point and he will do it with your faith believing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, that was awesome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anything with men, it's impossible, but with God, all things shall be called possible 
to them that believe. Amen. How many believe that tonight? Praise the Lord. Give out a little thumbs up or a heart if you believe God can do something for you because he's certainly a way maker. Hallelujah. Oh, what an awesome song. That's an oldie. Yeah, but a goodie. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise the Lord tonight. Amen. <clears throat> Welcome everybody out uh, to the service. For those that just joined, we're going to get into the word of God today. And you know, the church is at an interesting time. We're really at a pivot point. And um, the church will never be the same again. What we've known in the past and what the church will become in the future are going to be different. Not necessarily in what we believe or our message or even our standard, but the way in which we approach people, the way in which we engage, the way in which we operate in our ministry. That's going to evolve and change so that it can be even more effective for God. And that's what you look at throughout the Bible. You know, that's going to be the success of this pivot of the church. And sometimes we're going to have to let go of these traditions that don't matter anymore without lowering the standard. That's going to be the key to success for the church. And we can operate in the fullness of God so that we can do all that he has called us to do. So amen. So, you know, it's this new generation that's rising up. You know, they have a powerful tool. They have their voice and they have passion and they're wanting the world to change. If you talk to any young person that you just see this passion, if you turn on the news, it's the young people that are speaking out. It's the young people. It's this generation that's rising up that has this passion. How much more do we as the church should have the same passion to reach people for God, to reach people so that they can be saved, to reach people so that they can know about Jesus Christ? Because all of these efforts that are going on are great, but the only way a man's heart is going to change is through Jesus Christ. All throughout the Bible, we see this. When we turn our hearts to Jesus, he can come in and change us, make us love again, make us right, make us sin-free. And I love that about God because anyone can come to him and receive that salvation. That gift is free. It doesn't cost us anything because Jesus already paid for it. So we're seeing some mighty things. And sometimes I just want to call out for the elders, don't discount anything you've done in the past because... The new generation may not understand all that you've done to build the ministry. They may not have seen you build that ministry. They may not understand the hours and hours of time and dedication and prayer and faithfulness that you as an elder has contributed to the house of God. But I want to let you know one thing. There is somebody that understands and there is somebody that sees and that's God. And God knows exactly what you put into this thing so that this generation can use that platform to launch into even greater spaces. So the foundations you laid are all for what the new generation is going to launch off of. And that's exciting because none of your labor is in vain. And I just want to let you know that tonight. And as I get into this message called No Matter What, you know, in the book of 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says this. It says, for we walk by faith not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. How many knows if you based your faith on what you see, there wouldn't be a whole lot of hope out there, amen? However, I'm glad God does not work with what we see. He works on with what he said because his word is what's gonna come to pass. Not necessarily what you see is the final outcome of what you're believing God for because God says, my word is not going to return unto me void. It is going to accomplish the thing I set it forth to do. So his word is truly the final authority. So, you know, I like that because faith, I mean, true faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So where, where are you going to spawn your faith from? Right here this holy word, this Bible. This is what God spoke. So when you grab a hold of this, things can change. So if this does not align with what you see, you could speak to the things that are not as though they were through the word of God, and it's gonna come to pass because it's in God's word. And that's just the faithfulness of God in our lives. So, you know, if you think about all the people that if they were just to go by what they see, their miracles would not have happened. Blind Bartimaeus, he was blind. All people can see was a blind man. But when Jesus came by, 
What had happened? He heard that Jesus was there. He heard the words of Christ and he asked Jesus for a miracle. He asked for sight and Jesus gave him a miracle. He did not accept the conditions that he was in because he knew that there was a greater purpose in his life. He knew he didn't want to stay there. I think some of the problems that people face is we get used to situations in our lives, but sometimes you've got to shake yourself to know that this is not a final outcome. What God says is the final outcome. So he used his faith and not based on what he could see. And literally, he couldn't see. He couldn't see a thing. <laughs> and then Jesus gave him his sight. Amen. Peter, when he saw Jesus walking on water, he wanted to approach him. But when Jesus' word came forth saying to Peter, come out, take a step out in faith, come walk on this water, step out right? What did Peter do? He took God's word and did the miraculous and walked on water and was reunited with Jesus again. So these things happened and because of people's faith and not necessarily what they see. That was a stormy night. There was waves going to and fro, but he kept his eyes on Jesus and actually did a miracle in the presence of God. And the same can happen for us. Amen. So because when God sends his word, something has to happen. It's like a catalyst. And his word is the final authority. So we walk by faith, not by sight. And I want to bring out an illustration in the Bible. We're going to go to the book of Habakkuk. And I'm going to talk about uh, Habakkuk a little bit and kind of the pattern he went through to help us in this area. And, uh, you know, praying about it, it it's really uh, relevant to what we're facing today. So if you want to turn to the book of Habakkuk, we're going to go right to chapter one. And we're going to do some reading in there and to know this, that no matter what is going on, God is going to have the final say and God is going to do something on your behalf. So let's go to God in prayer before we get into this word. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. God, you've kept us. You sustained us. You're helping us. You're healing us. You're bringing salvation to people's lives. You're bringing questions to people's minds that are causing them to search for something greater than what they have. And that greater is you. People want to start having the conversations again about God. People want to know what the truth is. And God, we have the truth. It's in your word. We thank you, God, for everything that's going on around us. The things that we see, we know that no matter what, you have a plan and you have a purpose. So we're grateful to you, God, for this tide. We, we're grateful to you, Lord, for just helping us and blessing us and sustaining us through all of this. Because you are surely a God that is faithful. And we thank you and praise you. We ask you to bless this word as it goes forth. Let it encourage all those attending online, God, and let it bless their life. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. So the book of Habakkuk, chapter one, I'm going to read verses one and four. And I want you to stay with me because it's kind of interesting, the pattern that he goes through. And we're going to get into this uh, in the message tonight. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance, for spoiling and violence are before me. And there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Habakkuk is going to God with some major concerns that he has. Before I get into it, Habakkuk is one of the shortest books in the Bible, three chapters long. The prophet's ministry starts around the same time as Jeremiah. And there were some difficult times he was facing and the nation was facing of Israel. In this book, the Bible uh, is really interesting because it's, only, it's one of the only books where a prophet is communicating with God for himself and not necessarily relaying the prophecy to the people. But it's his demonstration of how he approaches God and deals with things that is the prophetic way we should handle things. 
And it's, it's a miraculous book. It's awesome. And I'm so glad that we have it as a reference of how we can be with God. When it, what it does show us is sometimes what's in the minds of prophets and frankly, what's in the mind of you because the dialogue starts with a burden that Habakkuk sees. He's seeing what's going on around him. He's seeing the trouble. He's seeing the violence. He's seeing the strife and contention that's rising up. And he says, God, what are you doing? Where are you? Why are you allowing this evil to take place? Why are you not doing something about it? How can you be just and how can you allow this wickedness to proceed? The prophet has some questions. He started to question even God's ability. Like, what are you doing? Judgment doesn't seem to be working here. Where are you? Shouldn't you come down and strike things down and set things in order? I've been praying here. What's going on? I mean, verse four is a train wreck, essentially. I mean, he's just saying all of these things that don't seem to be working. So he goes to God with these questions. How about you? Do you have some questions? Are you looking in the world, the turmoil that's around us, the injustice, the evil that's trying to encompass the righteous and wrong judgments that seem to be proceeding out from the world? Have you had some questions lately? I know I have. You know, um, we're in interesting times. You know, this past Christmas, I went to the bookstore and in the kids' section of the bookstore, they had a display. And in the display, they had your Christmas books, your typical Christmas books, the story of Christmas, the birth of Jesus, uh, you know, everything you can possibly imagine about Christmas time and Jesus was there, all in this display that was sitting in the kids' section. But then when you look right next to it, there was another display that was all about modern witchcraft. Okay, in the kids section during Christmas time, the occult, how to be a witch, even one of the books had a witch holding up a broom with a raven on top of it, right next to the display of Christ. I, I begin to look at this and say, God, how can this be possible? Is there is the enemy getting this bold where it's trying to set up a stronghold right next to where the story of Christmas is, which is the whole hope of salvation for the world? And the enemy is getting bold. But let me tell you something, church. The church needs to be bolder because when these things start rising up, we can't go based on what we see. So we can dismiss this and say, you know what? Oh, the enemy's coming in. I don't know if there's any hope or all this stuff. No, we have to rise up and we have to push back on this stuff so that it does not penetrate the lives of people, especially our youth. You know, I was, then I went to the kind of the book session section of, of youth and what they're reading these days because that intrigued me. I'm like, how can this just be stood up like this? And it's amazing if you even Google the number one books that the youth are reading, most of them filled with spiritualism, mysticism, brokenness. How about being lost in isolation, rebellion? It's just awful stuff that who would want to put that in their spirit? Yet it's the number one sold books around the world. Who's pushing this stuff? You know, evil is present around us. And if you're not careful, you will say, where's God? Even if the enemy gets bold, we need to get bolder. Even when you see the enemy come in like a flood, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against it. Hallelujah. See, this is where we got to go into word motion. We can't go based on what we see. We got to go based on what God says. And that means we got to start speaking that word that comes from Almighty God to push back on all these things. You see, even when the enemy comes in like that flood, that standard's going to be raised. You have to know God's word and how it says in Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock, I will build my church, Jesus said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I can get fearful when I see some of these strongholds by the enemy trying to be risen up, but you got to know something. There may be some questions you have. There may be some things that are going through your mind saying, God, where are you? How can you allow this? But I want to let you know something. God's got something brewing. <laughs> He's looking for us to release his word, to push back on this stuff so that people can be free. Amen. So I dare say that we are experiencing the same thing Habakkuk was experiencing during his time. A nation that was unrestful, things starting to come in, evil starting to rise up, things he couldn't comprehend, things that he's just, he just couldn't believe with his own eyes, but yet he was seeing it. 
One problem that this prophet has, and it's many of our times is our problem, he was basing on his conclusions of what he could see. Verse one, his burden based on what he saw. However, one thing he did in the midst of all of this, he went to God with his questions. He went to God. So his life starts to show us what we need to do when we have questions. We need to go to God and not just wait, but go to God right away. Because no matter what you see, God has a plan. Our faith is not driven by what we see. It's driven by God's word. Hallelujah. So this is the part that gets really interesting. Because God is hearing this man. <laughs> and you don't see God strike him down by, for him asking questions. You don't see God getting angry with this prophet for approaching him with his concerns. No, 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 no. What you're seeing is Habakkuk showing us a way that's saying, you know what? It's okay to go to God with our questions. It's okay to enter boldly into the throne room of grace. Hallelujah. And make our petitions known to God. Let God know what's on your heart. Release that stuff. Because if you don't release it to God, you're going to release it somewhere else. And more times than not, it'll be released improperly. But when you go to God, he starts to show you things. And here is what God says. Here's the first reply. In verse five, this is so cool. He said, behold, Ye are among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. <laughs> One thing I notice about this scripture is this, and even what I've experienced in my life, when you truly go to God, sincerely with your questions, it won't take God for you to, long to reply to you and to build you up to start addressing the things that concern you today. Even Jesus said, cast your care upon me, for I care for you. Release it to God right away. Tell him what's bothering you. Tell him what you're concerned of the things you see, because he's going to have a response for you. Here was God's response. Do you know, look at God. First, he recognizes and acknowledges the situation. He says, you're among the heathen. He knows your environment. He knows the turmoil you're already in. But then he turns the table and he says to the prophet, I'm about to do something. <laughs> Amen. I'm about to work a work. If I told you, you won't believe me. My God, I'm telling you, God's got something in store. If he really sat down and told you the whole plan, you won't believe him right now. That's why he comes in pieces. Hallelujah. You can't go based on what you see. God's much greater than that. Hallelujah. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He's got something brewing in the midst of all this mess. Hallelujah. He said he's going to work a work in our days. Hallelujah. He said it to my God, Habakkuk, and he's saying it to us prophetically. When you see this evil rising up around you, do you think God's just going to sit by idle and let this stuff happen without intervening? in some way to deliver his people, we got to get back to reading our Bible. All I read is deliverance of people of God. All I read is healing for the people of God. All I, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. All I know is salvation can come in the midst of this mess. If you got a sickness now, or you know someone that's sick, healing can still come right now because God said he could do it. And we have to go to God with our concerns and let him speak to us to build us up again. You know, I'm here to tell somebody, God's about to do a work. He is about to show up and he's about to show off. He has a plan. He's always had the plan and the plan is being executed before our eyes and things are about to change. Don't you worry about a thing. God's up to something. You know, if you start reading Habakkuk, things don't start off so hot in this book, okay? Uh, the prophet is in the midst of violence. He sees evil all around. He doesn't understand what he sees. But we walk in faith, not by sight. No matter what, I'm going to do what God called me to do. I'm going to go to God no matter what. And he's going to help me. So then God goes on. And he starts to tell the prophet about what's about to go down. He kind of unfolds the plan a little bit. And how God is actually allowing the evil to rise up for a purpose. And sometimes God allows evil to rise up. And that sounds kind of weird. 
but he's allowing it to be elevated so that people can know what evil looks like. Because the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And as this evil's rising up, God goes on to say, I'm going to use that evil to destroy itself. And people are going to see it. <laughs> He's going to use the enemy rising up to destroy the enemy itself. Hallelujah. And as he hears God respond, Habakkuk starts replying, God, your eyes are pure. How can you watch this happening? How can you hold back your tongue? Why can't you do something now? He goes on. But then you get to chapter two. And as he talks with God, he realizes that God is still God. And the prophet makes a choice. You have a lot of choices that you can make during this time. You have a lot of choices that you can display at this time. You can choose to fear. You can choose to hold your peace and be silent and not do anything. You can choose to let down your guard. You can choose to let down your faith. You can choose to enter into the nastiness of some of these things. You can choose all those things. But here's what the prophet chose. In the midst of all this, even through all of this that's happening, all the things that he's seeing and all the things that he is feeling, he starts chapter two, verse one, by saying this, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. What are you saying? When he's having this conversation with God, a choice was made. Something rose up in Habakkuk that said, you know what? Even in the midst of all this, I'm gonna stand on my watch. I'm gonna keep my watch. I'm going to stay right where God placed me in the ministry, I right where I'm supposed to be. I'm not gonna let my calling fall. I'm not gonna let my vision fall. I'm not gonna let my desires go to the wayside. God spoke to many of us about things that we're gonna do for God. Don't you dismiss that now. You stand upon that tower, hallelujah. And one thing about a tower, it is high. That means you're going up places. You're going to higher places. You're gonna go where God can hear you. When you start to separate yourself from the world and start to rise up in that tower, Power, you're removing the noise that's on this earth and you're getting a hold of what God's going to say. The higher you go, the closer you get to God. And the closer you get to God, the more he has to say to you, hallelujah to God. And my God, he's going to do something for your life. Ah, somebody say amen. Woo. I don't know if this chair is going to hold me today. Amen. This is awesome. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand and I'm going to, I'm going to stand there until I get my answer. It reminds me of the book of Acts, where Jesus says, stay in that upper room until you're endued with power from on high. Don't you go anywhere until you're filled with the power of God, until you have your answer. I'm not gonna let go of nothing that God promised me until it comes to pass. Somebody say yes, amen. I'm gonna hold that thing close. I'm gonna go to that tower and set myself. This is my watch. And I'm going to fulfill what God has for my life. Amen. So there's a change that happens. Habakkuk goes from these concerns to saying, you know what? I'm going to set myself. I'm going to see what God's talking about here. I want to see what God's going to do here. He's telling me that a work is about to happen. I'm going to watch it for myself. So he dismisses what he sees today and he's looking to the future. Amen. So this is what we need to do. I love this. God goes on to say, and the Lord answered me, because how many knows when you dedicate time to God, he's going to give you an answer? How many knows when you set time aside in prayer, he's going to come visit you? How many knows when you open up that Bible and really get into it, he's going to speak to you? That's exactly what happened to Habakkuk. He dismissed what was going on around him. He needed some alone time with God. And God answers him and says this, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. <laughs> for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. How can God do what I need him to do with all this going on? Oh, he wrote a vision down a long time ago. He said, make it plain, so that when you read it, you're gonna run with it. Because here's the thing, God says, write it down. 
what I'm about to do, when people realize that I've, I've not forgotten them, when people realize that I've, I haven't sat down idle, when people realize that I have not forsaken them, when people realize that I have not thought evil toward them, if people realize that I'm going to work a work in their life and it's gonna be totally unbelievable, my God, if you to understand that it's gonna come in with glory and power, when they read that, they're gonna run. Where are they gonna get this vision from? Right here. When they start to read that vision that God has, the Holy Bible, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we don't have to stay in this mess. We have a promise to get out of this place. Hallelujah, through Jesus Christ. You have a promise from God to do all that God has for your life, to get out of any sin that you're in. Nothing can hold you back when you come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Anyone that can read this word that's looking for truth, when you get a hold of it, you're going to run. Hallelujah. Read the vision, church. Keep becoming in that, keep reading that Bible for yourself. Don't just rely on someone else to give you that word. Read it for yourself. Hallelujah. You know, he said when you read it, it's going to be like Jeremiah. It's going to be like fire in your bones. Hallelujah. I'm going to set them on fire, God said. I'm going to, my God, and you're going to run for God. You're going to run for truth. You're going to run with the Holy Ghost. But you got to get in that word. You got to read that vision for yourself. It's for an appointed time. And the time is now. If you were to tell me what 2020 would have beheld us, I would not have believed you. Just like God said. God said, if I would have told you what I'm going to do, you won't believe me. No one would believe this would happen to us in 2020. But God's up to something. We got to take this opportunity and link in with God to fulfill what he has for us. Read that vision. Hallelujah. For your life. Amen. It's for an appointed time. Now's the time. You know, like I said, when, you know, about this new generation, they have a voice. They're speaking out. And we need to speak truth. Speak that gospel to those that are hurting. There are people that are hurting. You know, you, the news is not going to report the amount of police calls that are going in to houses that are people that are over, overdosing on PS, PCP and all sorts of domestic violence and everything like that. You're not going to hear the me media kind of play on that where police officers are going in to deal with that. But it's happening. And the thing is, we got to pray and we got to reach out with it, however we can in the circumstance we're in. We need to run and fulfill the vision that God has given you for your life. Though it tarry, it seems, wait for it. It will not tarry. This is our time. There's no better time right now to start implanting things into your kids. There's no other time to start putting God's word and speaking faith and speaking positive good things from God into those that are backslidden. In love and mercy, now is your time. I'm telling you, now is your time because people are open right now. Amen. It's our moment and your answer is coming sooner than you think. Habakkuk decided, even though I don't understand, even though I don't like what I see, I'm going to stand in my place and be faithful to God and see his salvation come down with power. One thing you're going to have to do is be yourself too. This is what I love about Habakkuk. He was real. You know, the, somewhere along the way, it's like the church put up this front. I'm just looking for real people. Listen, we need to be real because people respond to realness. There are too many fakes and phonies out there. We don't got time for that. We need real Christians to rise up with the power of the Holy Ghost and with the word of God and to stand in your place because God will even send people your way. You'll, he'll send you to people. But we got to be in a place where we're just real. We know what our weaknesses is. We know all these things. We just got to be real. You know, it's but you got to be yourself. You can't be someone else. Habakkuk was being real with God. It was him and God. And in this time, it's going to be you and God. And just be real with him. Be honest. Tell him your concerns. This conversation was between that prophet and God. You know, it's funny because Lorenzo... He uh, went to get the mail the other day and my shoes were near the door. So his shoes were upstairs and like any normal 10 to 11 year old, rather than going up and getting his shoes, he wanted to use my shoes to go down and get the mail and come back. Somebody say amen for those that have boys. Yes. <laughs> 
So we went down to get the mail and he starts running up the driveway with my shoes on. And he said something interesting. He said, I can't run fast in your shoes. And I told him, of course you can, because those shoes weren't designed for you. You need to run in your own shoes. You see, you need to run in your own salvation. You need to run with your own Holy Ghost. You need to run with your own desires. No one can micromanage your salvation. Sorry, it doesn't happen that way. They can try. They can encourage and do all sorts of things, but nobody can micromanage your salvation to make sure you're saved. You're gonna have to manage that yourself. You need your own shoes. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, work out your own salvation daily with fear and trembling. Your own salvation, you and God, just like Habakkuk and God had this conversation. You can go to God that way. You and God, relationship. My God, that's what we need in this hour. You be you. And no matter what, just run for God. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to fill somebody else's shoes. You fill your own shoes. And for goodness sake, don't let anybody force you to be put in their shoes. My God, somebody say amen there. God designed you. You know, I went to New Balance. If you go to New Balance, it's amazing. The technology they have for shoes, okay? You go in there and there's this digital machine. You put your foot down and it screens your foot and shows every indent and everything, uh, all the grooves of the bottom of your foot. And they design your shoe based on your specific foot. I'm like, okay, we're going there, we're there. I mean, I have a machine that can design a shoe for my own foot. It's specific for you, designed. And when you get that shoe, there is no other perfect shoe that, that will, that'll fit your foot than the one designed by that machine. So I've got to think, well, you know what? God designed us as individuals and he designed you with a purpose. And your purpose may not be like somebody else's purpose. And that's okay because God doesn't have a machine. He has his heart and he knew what he wanted you to be. He, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. It takes time to get that shoe designed. You know what? And God took time for you. How much greater are you than all of these other things? And God took time to design your life and to know exactly how you would live your life and provided you all the things you would need to be successful if you just hold on to him. Hallelujah. Run in your own shoes. Somebody say, run in your own shoes. Amen. <laughs> God's got one designed for you. Amen. Some will be faster than others. That's all right. Because God doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who goes first in this race. All that matters is if you cross the finish line. Whether you're first or last or in the middle, you go your pace with what God is telling you to do and you will be successful with him. I love that about God. No matter what, run with God. Just be real. No facades. No phony baloney. Not a fake. I want the real thing. And you know what? The world wants the real thing. You know who else wants the real thing? The youth want truth and the youth want the real thing. They want the true power of God Almighty. You know, it's funny, people talk a good game until the throne in the fire. Then you're gonna really see who they are. <laughs> Just be real, be you. We're looking for people, you know, to come and be like these ready-made you know, ready Christians. Just like, as soon as they repent and, and, you know, come to the altar, all of a sudden, boom, they're all ready for ministry and everything like that. That's not how this works. Jesus, he can take things away instantaneously. He took away drinking and smoking and cheating and lying and all these things. He can take that in one moment when you repent of your sin and are with a truly repentant heart and want to change for your life, he'll come in and take all that stuff out of your life. But some of the deep things take some more time. I'm in this thing for over 40 years and he's still working on me. Somebody say amen. So here's the deal. I'll be a strength to your weakness you be a strength to my weakness, and let's get through this thing together. Amen. Hallelujah. And let me tell you what the secret is. Habakkuk found it in verse 4. As you read this, here it is. It says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up and is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And the just are going to live by his faith. It's not anything I can do in myself. If that were the case, Jesus would have never had to come. All the problems of our world would have been solved in the Old Testament. They weren't. Because we need a greater power to come in on the inside. Not just for a time on the outside. We need impartation of God's spirit 
inside of us in order for us to stand up and be all that God wants us to be. And the just, those that want this, those that want to change, those that want to do the right thing are going to live by faith. And that's how this thing's going to come forth. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. I need him every day in my life. I need to communicate with him every day. I got to know that he's right by my side. And his word is a way for him to be right by your side. This is Jesus Christ right here. He was the walking word of God. So no matter what, live by faith. Romans 1, 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Everybody say faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. They're quoting Habakkuk. You go to Galatians 3.11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. <laughs> it is evident <laughs> for the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10.38, now the just shall live by faith. So no matter what you see, the just is gonna live by faith. No matter what you hear, the just are gonna live by faith. No matter what you think, the just is gonna live by faith. No matter what you feel, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. You gotta turn yourself around and have faith in God, no matter what. I like this because chapter two goes on. He starts showcasing these things, talking about the pride of the Chaldeans. That was the enemy at that time that was rising up. They were organized that evil uprising. Let me tell you something. Evil is organized in our day and it's trying to rise up like never before. It's gonna cause, that pride though, is gonna cause them to fall. Warnings start going out. If you read that chapter through, warnings go out of those, of those that are violent, those that are deceitful, all these nasty things that are going on. God sends a warning. And then you get to chapter three. And this is what I love about Habakkuk. He's holding on this whole time. And you need to hold on this whole time because when you start getting to chapter three, something happens. Chapter one, he starts crying out for himself. God, where are you? What are you doing? What's going on? He opens up the lines of communication with God. He gets himself and sets himself, makes a decision that I'm gonna stay in the will of God. I'm gonna stay with God all these days. I'm gonna set myself on the watchtower. I'm gonna see what God's gonna say to me. And then you get to this chapter and now he's asking God and praying for others. Now you see the prophet turn from his concerns to concerns for other people. And he starts to pray for the other people. He starts to ask God, God, send mercy to these people. God, just send that mercy and all that love and all that you are. Bring that to the people. When you get halfway down through it, you see that the prophet now, he's praying. See, a cry out to God for reasoning is one thing. Prayer for others is another. So he turns himself off and himself unto others. And halfway through that prayer, he starts to turn his prayer into praise. <laughs> Amen. He starts out with questions, the burden he sees. But then God's word comes to him, starts building his faith. And now we start seeing him praise God and for who he is. I'm going to read a little bit of that. Chapter 3, let's read a little bit. Uh, verse 10. The mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice, and they lifted up his hands on high. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation at the light of thine arrows that they went. And at the shining of thy glittering spear. <laughs> Verse 12. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Thou went forth for the salvation of thy people even for salvation with thine anointed. Hallelujah. Even with me, God, you're going to march through this thing. You're going to be with me. My God, he's giving God some praise. Let me tell you something. Why don't you praise God right now for what he's going to do in your life? We don't got to wait till the battle's over. We can shout right now. Hallelujah. Turn your prayer time into praise time and get built up in the faith of God. He goes on to say, hallelujah. My God, verse 14, thou didst strike through with the staves, the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. All these devices that they tried to happen against me. But thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters. God can walk through anything, hallelujah, to reach you where you're at. Hallelujah. Jump down to 17. 
This is where he really lays it out. So this is an interesting part of his praise. Check this out. He says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive tree shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. You would think, well, wait a second. Isn't he just praising God? Why is he going into this saying all these, all, if all of these things happen, if all of these things occur, look at verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The prophet starts listing things out toward the end of this praise. I mean, he got down and dirty. He starts saying things like, if I don't see my fruit, if I don't see things, things aren't going the way I want them for my flock, if I don't get my figs, if I don't get my meat, if my 401k goes down, if I don't get that job, if my promotion is on hold, if my unemployment check is held up, I'm still going to praise you, God. Woo! I don't care what is going on. No matter what, God is going to be God and he's going to be the joy of my salvation because at the end of these things, if I have him in my life, that is all I need. No matter what. I'm still going to give God my praise. No matter what, I'm still going to lean on God. Check this out. In verse 19, he ends by saying this. The Lord God is my strength. This is his final declaration. This is how you need to leave your prayer room every day. You need a final prophetic declaration over your life for that day. This is what it should say. The Lord is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer of my stringed instruments. This guy got so happy. I mean, he laid it down. He said, no matter what, God, if I don't get my figs, if I don't get my meat, if I don't see this happen, if I don't see that happening, all the things I like to have in my life, even if I don't see that, I'm still going to praise you. You're my strength. You're on high. You got me like hinds feet. I actually feel lighter where I can jump over things. Hallelujah. Woo. Because hinds feet are like them deer that just fly, man. They just fly over stuff. Nothing's going to hold me back from what you have me to do. And he gets so happy at the end. He has a praise party and calls the worship team up and says, let's go. We're going to have some worship time right now. Hallelujah. My God, we shall worship God right now. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Woo. Here's Habakkuk, goes from a problem to remembering his purpose. He goes into prayer and he turns it into praise, no matter what. I'm going to close this message with one last thing. I love this. The meaning of Habakkuk, the very definition of this prophet's name, means to embrace. Embrace. When Habakkuk saw all that mess, he did not run from God. He embraced God and got his answer. I want to encourage you today. If you are struggling, don't run from God. Run to God with your questions. Run to God with your prayer. Run to God with your purpose. Run to God with your praise and hold on to him Embrace him and never let him go. In the name of Jesus Christ. And he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Even until the end of the world. When you hold on to God, he's already been holding on to you. Amen. No matter what, do what the prophet did. Get to him. Embrace him. And don't let go. God is going to work it all out. Hallelujah. Man, that is so awesome. When I studied that word, it helped me so much to know that God understands exactly where we're living. He knows we're among the violence. He knows we're among the uprising of evil. He knows there's going to be some tough times. But I want to be like that prophet. I want to embrace God no matter what and never let go. Because one day he's going to carry us into heaven's gates. If you're here listening to this message and you don't know Jesus Christ and you never had an experience with him, 
Your, your life's a mess. You don't know where to turn. You don't know what to do. Tonight, you can actually pray to God like the prophet did. He went to God and said, God, here I am. What's going on? You know, I like that because if you look at that conversation that he started, it's kind of like a son and father talk. And if you're a son or a daughter, you can talk to your father a certain way. And that's how God wants you to talk. So many times we try to premeditate how we're going to say things to God. No, be real. Be real. Be raw. Lay yourself out before God. Lay yourself out before him. Just let him know where you're at. And let him empower you. Because when you rise up, you're going to be on a watchtower too. High and lifted up. And all of the things that are happening below you will not have an effect on your life. The vision that God has for your life has never changed. It is the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm telling you, God is about to do a work. If he told you what the fullness would be, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I can't wait to see what's going to happen in our lives as God unfolds this work. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah. So if you don't know the Lord Jesus, I'm going to pray. And I want you to join in in my prayer. And the church that's watching, we're all going to join in in this prayer. Because your salvation is so important to God. You don't got to stay in the struggle. The problem may not go away. That bill may still be on your desk. The report from the doctor may still be there. But one thing I do know is when you give it over to God, that's when he can do something with it. I don't got to carry that myself. God can do something with it. So we're going to pray and we're going to ask God to really help you. And if you have prayer requests, you're more than welcome to enter them in and that we can all pray together so that God can work on all of our behalves as one body because he loves each and every one of you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time together. We thank you, God, for all that you've done through your word tonight and entering into our hearts. God, if there's anyone watching that doesn't know you, it's, you said that you're as close as the mention of your name. They can literally say, Jesus, come into my heart. And I encourage you today, if you don't know Jesus, just pray along with us this prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. Change my life. If there's any sin, God, Forgive them of that sin. Let them start brand new. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your grace is sufficient for us. You're, you died on the cross for just this purpose, so that people can come to you, so that people can be free. They do not have to have depression. They do not have to have disputes. They do not have to have these things plague in their minds. They do not have to feel oppressed. They can be free tonight through your spirit, O oh God. You can reach right down to where they're at right now in their homes or wherever they're watching this, God, yes. and touch their soul. Give them an experience right now for them to know that you're real. Halabo shalamahaya. Oh, just touch them right now, God, through your spirit. God, just reach into their soul, oh God, and touch them. Hallelujah. No matter what, no matter what they did, you have the power to forgive. No matter what they went through, you have the power to save. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, God, for all that you are, Lord, in our lives. You're leading us out of this place and into higher ground. Thank you, God, that we can embrace you. We can embrace you tonight, and you'll never let us go. Hallelujah. You hold us in the palm of your hands. Hallelujah. And we know that you have a purpose in all that we see. So we thank you, God, for this time together. Strengthen every brother and sister, God. Strengthen every person that's watching, Lord, those that need to be saved. Let your spirit go before us, God, and pave the way for their salvation. Let our words always be effective, God. Let it stay to an impact, God, and never fall to the ground. Let our words truly be prophetic in people's lives, God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Send them our way. Send us to them. God, whatever you got to do, use our lives, God. Hallelujah for this vision. Hallelujah is still written. Let us run with what you wrote, God. Hallelujah to reach every soul for you. We ask you to bless the church and all the churches around the world. Those that are under fire, God, from a spiritual attack, God. We push back on the gates of hell in the name of Jesus. We push this thing back. We push back on people's lives that are being held back. We push back on these oppressions, oh God. Hallelujah, spiritual wickedness in high places. God, we cause these things, God, to come down and for people to be free. Let them get to know you 
Because once they get to know you, that's where true freedom comes from. Yes, oh, the liberty of your spirit, God. We thank you. We thank you for all that you're going to do, God. Work in our lives. Whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we look to you, God, for strength and glory and power. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, praise God tonight. I hope this message helped you. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're in a serious day. However, there's joy in the salvation of God. You pay attention to this world, you won't find much joy. But when you pay attention to God, like the prophet did, he got his joy back at the end. And his strength came. Amen. Amen. So let that be in you. Hallelujah. Let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you. Amen. Have a mind to pray and praise God. Hallelujah. Lift them up. So, Faye, you want to say goodbye? Bye. Bye. Amen. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be with you all. Hallelujah. We thank you for everything that you're doing, all your prayers. Continue to stay connected. Continue to stay uh, engaged with the church. Before you know it, we'll be back together and on the move. So, stay on the move and keep on running. Bye. Amen. You going to say bye? Say bye. I, I did. Oh, oh you sorry. did? <laughs> All right. Well, Bishop Dynamo has said the last word. So, anyway. <laughs> praise God. God bless you. We love you all, and we'll see you soon. And you take care. Have a wonderful week in God, and look for the miracles of God to happen in your life. Amen. Amen.